All right, with your converging lens, this is, in, in this case, the convex surface is the surface of the lens you see. So it sometimes it's called a convex lens, but converging lens, and it matches up though with your concave mirror, which is sometimes called a converging mirror. So converging lens with converging mirror, but the concave and convex is again the part that's switched. So in this case, I've got my lovely object, and if you notice, I've got it beyond the focal point. When we're beyond the focal point with the converging mirror, what was true? So when you guys were past the focal point, how did you look in that mirror? You're, yeah, you're upside down, so it's an inverted image, and an inverted image would also be a real image. Great. So in this case, we're going to see the same thing as true. So your light rays, where's the first one? And where does it come out? Cool. Where's your next one? Cool. Let's go, let's do principal axis real quick. Where's that one? Actually, let's try and do the center of the lens here. Where's that one go? Cool, and the last one? Through the focal point. It comes out parallel to the principal axis. And they all intersect at a point. Now, do the light rays really intersect? Is this where you would put your eyeball over here? Yeah, looking through the lens at the object. So in this case, they intersect, so for real. And if it's real, it's also, and how could we tell that it's inverted from our ray diagram? Yeah, the object's above the principal axis, but our image is below the principal axis, so it'll be inverted. Yep, yeah, real and inverted. And so the same thing is true. Here we're beyond the focal distance, so you get that real inverted image. Guess what would happen if we were within the focal distance? virtual and upright. So when you're looking through a magnifying glass, you're using a converging lens. So when you're looking at an object through the magnifying glass, where are you at? Where's the object in relation to the magnifying glass? Well, when you look through something through a magnifying glass, does it look upside down or right side up? It looks right side up, which means where are we? Notice you've got to put that magnifying glass pretty darn close to that object. That way the object is closer than the focal distance, and that way the image comes out to not be real and inverted, but to be virtual and upright. And just like when you're within the focal distance on a converging mirror, I'm sorry, yeah, within a converging mirror, when do we use those converging mirrors? Did we say when they're really close? For vanity mirrors, putting on makeup, that way your face looks huge. Same thing with the magnifying glass. As long as the object's within that focal distance, the image is going to be here bigger than the object, and it's going to be upright and virtual. Cool? Sweet. Let's see how the math on this works out. All right, question number one, you find that the thin lens and mirror equation is kind of your go-to equation in this section. Question number one says, if an object is placed 12 centimeters in front of a concave mirror, and the focal distance is given as four centimeters, what will be the magnification of the image? Is it real or virtual, upright or inverted? So first of all, let's just kind of put this out. So if we got the concave mirror, is your concave mirror converging or diverging? Okay, that's your converging mirror. So with it being the concave converging mirror, is the result the same no matter where the object is placed? No. It's the diverging ones that are always the same. Your diverging mirror is always a real, I'm sorry, is always a virtual upright image. It always appears small. All that little stuff, that's your security mirror, right? So, but your concave mirror, your converging mirror, it depends on which side of the focal distance you're on. Now in this case, the focal distance is given as four centimeters. What is the object distance given as? 
12 centimeters. Cool, so at this point we're beyond the focal distance. In fact, we're not only beyond the focal distance, what else are we beyond? We're beyond the radius of curvature. So because we're beyond the focal distance, what kind of image do we expect, first of all? And think about it. When you were, again, beyond the focal distance with the converging mirror, well, how did you look in the mirror? Upside down. Good. So real and inverted. Great. And because we're also beyond the radius of curvature, what's going to be true about the magnification? Yeah, we're gonna, the image is going to appear smaller than the actual object. And so in this case, your magnification, we should expect the absolute value of it to be less than 1. Now let me ask you a question. Because this is inverted, what does that imply about the magnification? So, and that implies that your magnification is going to come out negative. So with an inverted image, your magnification comes out negative. We'll find out because the image is real, that means our Q value here, our DI, if you will, should come out positive for a real image. Well, let's work out the math. So in this case, we've already figured out that it's real inverted. We've already got some qualitative things about the magnification. But let's do the math here. So in this case, your magnification is equal to the height of the image versus the height of the object. But notice, I don't really know anything about the height of the image or the object. So that's not really going to help us, but it's also equal to the negative of the image distance over the object distance. Sweet. So in this case, my goal is to find those that I don't know using the thin mirror and lens equation. So in this case, we are 12 centimeters away. We've got to do some math here. So note that your units here, we don't have to convert these all to meters. As long as these units all match, we can use any units we want to for length. In this case, I like centimeters. I would not want to do this in meters. So in this case, I'm going to have to do 1 over q equals 1 over 4 minus 1 over 12. What's my common denominator? 12. And 1 over 4 is the same as 3 over 12. And 3 over 12 minus 1 over 12 is? 2 over 12, which is the same as 1 over 6, which means q equals 6 centimeters. OK, so there's our image distance. Cool, and with our image distance being 6 centimeters, that's what kind of image again, being positive? Real. And being real, that makes it inverted, but it, this only tells us that it's real. OK, so let's do our magnification equation now. So in this case, we're going to get negative 6 centimeters over, what was our object distance? And what do we get for magnification? Negative 1 half. And again, the negative part means that it's inverted, so it's an inverted image. And the fact that it's less than 1 overall absolute value means that it's smaller. In this case, the image only appears to be half as big as the original object. Cool. Questions on number 1? All right, question number two, we're dealing with a diverging lens. So before we get into the specifics then, remind me of what you know to be true about a diverging lens. It's concave. So your diverging lens will be concave lens, great. What else is true? It'll be, uh, Do we always get the same kind of image or does it depend on where we place the object? Always be the same. Always be the same, and what is that image always gonna be? And so again, diverging lens means the rays are always going to diverge. And if the light rays are always diverging, they're never really going to converge on the same point. So you never get a real image. You only get the virtual image. And if it's virtual, it's going to be upright. OK, so we've answered a couple of the questions in this case. We already know it's going to be virtual and upright. But we want to know what is the magnification of the image. And we'll do that the same way we did number one here. So 
your magnification is negative Q over P, and we'll use the thin mirror and lens equation to figure out what Q is, so we can plug it into the magnification formula. So in this case, how far are, is the object placed from? 12. So there, 12 centimeters again. So one thing to note, your object distance is always gonna be a positive number in this section. Technically, if you start using systems of mirrors or lenses, you might actually have the, you know, a virtual image as your object and the next one and stuff like this. And, and, and technically, you, you might end up with a negative number in one of those cases. But if you're just dealing with one lens or one mirror, your distance to your object is always a positive number. So one over 12 centimeters plus one over Q. And what's our focal distance? Good. Oh, it didn't say four centimeters in the question. It said the radius yeah. Good. It said the radius of curvature is eight centimeters. So this is going to be four centimeters. But it's a diverging lens. So what's really true? For diverging lens or mirror, your focal distance is always negative. So a big common mistake here. So notice I gave you the radius of curvature is eight centimeters because I wanted to make sure you could figure out that the focal distance was not positive four in the equation, but negative four centimeters in the equation. Cool. So if we do some math here, we 